You know, it's amazing to think that even after the angel of the Lord had appeared to Gideon and told him in no uncertain terms that God had a good plan for him, Gideon was still very slow to believe it. It says, oh, sir, if the Lord is with us, then why has all of this befallen us? And where are all of his wondrous works of which our fathers told us, saying, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of Midian. Then the Lord turned to him and said, go in this your might, and you shall save Israel from the hand of Midian. Have I not sent you? But Gideon said to him, O Lord, how can I deliver Israel? Behold, my clan is the poorest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. When Gideon looked in the mirror, all he could see were disadvantages and shortcomings. He doubted that he was capable of greatness, and he wasn't convinced that God had picked the right man for the job. But the Lord knew exactly what Gideon needed to hear, and the Lord spoke right to the heart of Gideon's inadequacy. This is what the Lord said, surely I will be with you. These must be the most comforting words in the entire world, to know that God is with you, to know that God is for you. This is the ultimate assurance. These were the words that Gideon needed to hear, and these are also the words that you need to hear deep within your spirit as you begin this journey of discovering God's will for your life. And Jesus knew that you would need to hear them. That's why he said, I will never leave you or forsake you in Hebrews 13. And again, in Matthew 28, 20, he said, surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Romans chapter eight, verses 31 and 32 are some of my favorite passages in the Bible. It says, what shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? My friend, God is for you and not against you. Do you need evidence? In this passage of scripture, Paul points to the cross as the ultimate proof of God's goodwill for us. My friend, if God was willing to do that for you, if he was willing to give you his own son, how much more can we trust that he will gladly and generously give us anything and everything that we need? Do you feel like a failure sometimes? Does your past haunt you and define you? Do you have a difficult time believing that God really is on your side and really does have your best interests at heart? My friend, it's time for you to get a revelation of the goodness of God. He's not looking for perfect people and he's not intimidated by your past. The Bible says he desires to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Why? That he may be glorified. Yes. Paul wrote about this same truth in Romans 8, 28, when he says, and we know that all things work together for good to those that love God and to those that are called according to his purpose. When we understand this reality and when it becomes a part of the fabric of who we are, then we will be able to view every circumstance, both the positive and the negative, as a situation that God can put to work for our good and for the furtherance of his purposes in the earth. Salvation and atonement and forgiveness, justification, all of these are words that we use to describe what God desires to do in our lives. Turning ashes into beauty is not just some auxiliary side benefit of the Christian experience. It's right at the heart of the gospel, and it's God's will for you. Jeremiah 29, 11, that famous passage says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So to answer the question, does God have a plan for your life? The answer is a resounding yes, but it gets even better than that. Not only does God have a plan, he has a good plan that's exceedingly abundantly above anything that you could ask or think. And with that confidence, we can begin our journey looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith knowing that he who began a good work in you will complete it to the day of Christ Jesus.